Good, good evening, everyone. <coughs> um, the topic of the lecture tonight uh, will be a little bit different from what's been announced. Uh, I apologize for that. Uh, when I told Ben, like, what's the name going to be, like, around two in the morning, uh, around two o'clock, I thought I will have enough time to prepare. Um, a castle in the end game, which seemed to me like as a very interesting topic because no well, you know in the in the end game king supposed to stay in the center most of the time to participate in the fight uh king can protect itself it's a strong piece uh we're not supposed to castle in the, in the end game uh and I thought I'll find like a plenty of examples of like how is it uh, castle could be only an exception to that rule. But I started doing it and uh, realized just I need I need to go from through thousands of endgame be before I can find like uh, the one that I can use for that topic and. I simply did not have enough time to just prepare for the, that one. So uh, we're going to do something else today with the little help of my friends. Uh, Eduardo Rosenthalis published this book in 2018. It's called Correct Exchange in the Endgame. Uh, excellent book. Uh, uh, the second book in his series, the first one was a correct exchange in the middle game, which is like absolutely epic, um, epic work. I went through the whole book with uh, my students and it was like a real, real pleasure. This one, uh, no exceptions, the same thing. Um, if you go through the whole book, the way we're going to be doing it tonight. Um, your end game understanding will skyrocket. So let me close it up. Uh, we're just gonna go through the examples. Oops, did I? No, no, that's fine. It's fine. Okay. Uh, how about I'll bring it over here? All right. Okay, how about now? Yep, okay. Sorry about it. So we're just gonna do it the puzzle way uh, in each uh, diagram position. We will, first we will have to identify what uh, what's there to choose from, right? Exchange or not. And then we'll try to decide whether the exchange is correct or not. So, black to move, we'll see it by this little black dot in the right corner, okay? And black to move right now, so obviously the move that we're talking about is queen h6. So the question is, if we'll play in queen h6, are we gonna win this endgame or not? So what do you think? Uh, or let me put it uh, slightly different. Would you trade queens here, or, or you will try to attack attack White's position? Maybe put the queen on e4, put the queen on e2, and um, threaten g2. Try to bring uh, White queen to passive position, and then just somehow win it on its own one. Or you will play queen h6. If you will play queen h6, then you need like a specific setup uh, that I mean the black wins. This I mean after queen h6, you need to, you need to see this uh, plan all the way how the black wins. So, no, well, let's do the first one just on the, as a demo. I was like. Uh, 
So let's say we say playing queen h6 and white has to take take and king g1. So king goes over here, king f3, king f5. And now two different ways for white to continue here. First, let's say white just uh, doesn't do anything, just waits facilely, stays king g1. And then let's say we go in there and picking up the sorry pawn on a7, and then we come back. Is this position going to be winning or not? So here, here, can get two. this and that okay so no obviously it's winning right so just go bishop b7 waiting for one move taken and then come in here king h1 one takes no and just bishop f1 uh, you cannot take it because king h2 now we're forcing king out of the corner and black wins Okay, so in this position, oops, it's queen h4 is an important one, okay. So takes, takes. Uh, that means that this position is just simply winning for, for black king here, let's see, takes, king c4, this, here, oop, no, what I'm saying, king d6, king here, king a6, now we're just waiting for one move, the king comes back, king comes to b7, picking up the pawn and wins. So, if white simply takes on h6, well, the win is pretty simple. So queen h4 is the only move, okay? And now, what's the win right now? Okay. Go ahead. So black to move. No, situation is different. If we'll take on h4, that's the end game where black will have to fight for a draw. And I, frankly, I don't think it will be achievable with the pawn on uh, h4. So black cannot exchange queens. But we need, in order to win it, we need to force white to trade queens on h6. How are you going to do this? King g6, a good suggestion. Okay, so I'm coming to g1. Oh, then it's easy, right? Everyone sees the queen e3, king h2, and queen e4. So no checks, and checkmate on g2 is coming. So what if I go to, well, th that doesn't help because of this. Now what if, uh, what if I go to h1? Is that going to be different? So now you trade queens. Yeah. Oh, that's that's great. Yeah, and this one, perfect. Mhm. Mm Is that going to be? No, it's an easy one. Mhm. Mm Very good. So let's see, uh, king g6, what else can I do? Can I go king g1? Oh no, the, the, we already looked at it. Uh, yeah, that's it, that's it. Mm -hmm. King g1, aha, uh -huh. the, the last one may be this, oh, or to f1 instead, but then it's gonna be no, a couple of checks. Okay, maybe maybe you're right. Maybe queen c1 is better. 
equals c1. No, but queen c1, king goes back to h2. Uh, okay, where is the win now? Um, okay, takes and g3, probably the simplest, right? g3, then king picks it up. Uh, is this gonna be winning? Okay, hold on a second. Turn, 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 turn. Um, okay, it will be, it will be winning. Bishop f3, king g1. King here. That's a draw, right? Uh, can't the king just walk over to the pawn I said? Uh, yeah, well, let's say we did it, uh, but uh, where's the win? Okay, boom. Okay, turn. Turn. Yeah, I'm looking for, uh, I want to play bishop f3, but I don't see where where exactly it works, because, uh, no, of course, I'm not going to take it. Uh, so, here, here. Looks like it's a draw. Turn, 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 turn. It is a draw, yeah. You got to be careful. So, uh, where is the wind right now? Can do one. Check. Check. This looks logical. So here we go and check check no prob okay probably this is just simply winning because well why not uh king goes okay and the king goes on the first rank will trade in queens King goes to c3, we'll just go over here. Uh, king goes to e3. Same thing, right? Queen h3. And that's it. All right. So those were, it's it just like a demo. Of, it was a little bit more complicated than I expected, but... Uh, that's what we're gonna do. All right, so next one is black to move right now. And let's try to understand what the, do you want from us here? Okay. Um, is it rook takes before? And then what? Try to make a draw? So if we're taking on b4 and c takes b4, well, black cannot win it, right? So rook d4, rook f5, check, take on h5. So rook takes b4, pawn takes. Yeah, king c4 looks logical, but then 
uh, why where is the correct exchange and then just don't understand um, Are we f is the rook gonna be traded anyway oh maybe there is no way for white to exchange I mean to avoid the exchange no but if I'll play to simply go okay can you see four right so what are we looking for here No, I, I don't understand it. Okay, so I probably need to see. Probably need to see what's the. King c6, King g7, King c7, King g6. And what? I don't know what is it was it uh, the trying to say that white is better in starting position and we need to make a draw uh, weird okay I know next one All right. Uh, black to move. Okay. Better rook. Okay. Rook d three on the channel okay so we get in this position with uh, with the black to move so let's try to understand what they want us to do here um, bishop takes c6 uh, uh, black is down upon and no questions about black is fighting for a draw uh, a5 is not a threat immediately but as a black player are we going to be taken on c6 and white cannot take with a bishop because that's an immediate draw but rook takes bishop takes opposite color bishop is that going to be a draw or we going to lose because of a pawn okay so Wow, this is complicated. So are we going to... Uh, if knight takes f2 and bishop g4, uh, you mean bishop takes f2 and bishop g4? Yeah, but then knight simply moves away. Hmm. Yeah, I, d I don't think it's tactical. It's just a, it's a question more, uh, are we going to save opposite color bishop position? Or we'll try to defend with simply by standing. We'll try to defend with two bishops because, well, I'm, we're holding everything. Rook takes, rook takes f3 and bishop takes c6 works only for white takes on f3 with a rook yeah but uh, if not it's, it just doesn't work so yeah it's more of a the question is more like are we standing or passively whatever king g7 or we can go h6 or rook d6 or we take it on c6 because now we are forcing uh, opposite color bishops so th this is more, mm -hmm. I think black is more opposite, in opposite color. Well, so let's think about it. So bishop takes c6, white has to take with the rook, and we take in on c6, bishop takes. 
so what is our setup here? King e7, king f3, king d6, bishop b5. I'm kind of worried about like pawn on h6. It's it's too too weak. And then Yeah, I got I got a feeling that this this position might be simply lost because uh, the fact that black king is more active than the white one really really doesn't matter like that much because uh, what do we do now after no okay no uh, all right so here okay maybe a little bit more precise yeah but how's precise we we cannot play My, uh, king f3 was was not a good one uh, so let's say here I need to put the pawn on a four like this. So can my and if I'll get to h5 and then back and forth back king g4 king on so to do 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 do. Yep, uh, it looks like uh, indeed, yeah, opposite color bishops should be should be holdable. Uh, however, again, I'm like uh, in the practical game. Would I stay with two bishops and just say like two bishops are really really good because it's a great combination of pieces like rook and two bishops. Mm, if you're not very familiar with like a hierarchy of a combination of pieces so number one is two rooks two bishops it's absolutely the deadliest combination of pieces in the chess game and then there comes queen and knight and then maybe queen and two knights right and then uh, queen and knight and then rook and the bishop comes at number three yeah and those three combination of pieces always considered to be an advantage so here black has an advantage in that but uh, um, actually like for example if I'll just go here how can how can white possibly improve this and maybe he can slowly but I already threatened rook d2 right mm. so let's say here this is there a chance it should be a draw okay uh, yeah okay yeah I don't know uh, I feel like in practical game especially if I be low on time I would not take on c6 but also I understand that it's probably the simplest simplest way for to to draw this because uh, uh, I simply don't see the way that well for in order for white to win it the king has to go, get to a pawn and uh, but no it's just not realistic that the king will always be there okay one turn answer. Yeah, a5 never works. Uh, that, that's the point. So, all right, let's see what's the correct answer. And, uh, correct answer, bishop takes c6. Yeah, I don't know how they like uh, this. Uh, turn do, h6, king e7. Bishop a5, uh huh. So we just very easily hold in this this way, and king can never get to h6 pawn because g3 is hanging, and king uh, taking care of a pawn. So it's actually a pretty simple draw. Yeah, th this is already a forced draw over here. 
So this is a uh, no. Um, it's just an interesting, like a wood. Yeah, see, engines also they don't want to go into opposite color bishops. Uh, exactly the same sentiment that I. Uh, same thing that I thought. I don't really see how white can improve this position with two uh, bishops on the board but uh, on the other hand bishop takes c6 it would be a very very firm draw from someone like Karyakin uh, almost guarantee that he will go for it like a straight away without like a, uh, a a second of hesitation so yeah okay king g7 is more practical yeah, but uh, okay. So I think both. Let, let's say this. So both moves looks like a lead to a draw. But uh, if we will hesitate in a game to play bishop takes c6, and then at home we'll find out that this is a very very easy draw. With a, uh, we want next time we won't be able to take on c6. That's how we get in better in the end game. Okay, even though. From practical point of view, yeah, King G7 or Rook D D6, it's uh, pretty much the same. Okay. All right. So, a white to move right now, and what kind of exchange are we talking about here? Uh huh. I see what kind of exchange are we talking about? Rook d1 uh, takes 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 on c4. Rook d7, and we take it back on b7. So, are we going rook f to d1 or not? Rook takes. Wow. So it's only three years passed since I did this book, and I can tell you that I don't remember a single one of those positions. Interesting. Okay. Okay. Rook d1. Mm, so pawns are equal. The white enjoys the better pawn structure, and. Technically, black holds the, the holds the d file, which makes his position. Oh yeah, and he wants. Do I want to play rook d three? No, I'm not sh not sure. I do. So rook d one. Why not rook e one, for example? Because then I can go like knight to d two, right, and activate my rook. So rook to d one. A prevents it. Let's say king of eight, and then king of eight. On what then? <laughs> and then we'll be taken on d eight. No, but that that given up this all right rook d1 and king f8 do we want to trade one pair of rook and then start bringing our king to the center right king f1 king g2 king g3 and yeah i would if uh you asked me about like the correct exchange here. I would say that uh, it's more important to trade a pair of knights rather than a pair of rooks would be. Yeah, okay. 95, mm, uh, I hope it does not drop the pawn after knight d2 and f6. I hope it's not, but you know, who knows? And uh, 
also knight f6, bishop f knight e5, sorry, bishop f6, what happens then? So, okay, so I wonder if like a question of exchange here is about like we're playing rook d1, trading rook, or we're playing rook e1 and trying to exchange the knight. And we should not be afraid of knight d2 because that helps us out. Mm. Right, and then when black plays knight d2, well, then we take and then we go rook f to d1. Then, because this way we guarantee that we're going to make it to, to d7. So maybe this first and Okay, knight d2 and knight d6, that's what we want. Because knight d6 will simply take it right and go rook d1. Is that correct? Okay, let's see. There we go. c4 is hanging, so better take take no well, yeah it, it's gonna be a very unpleasant end game for for black king goes to the center pawns are weak and gonna remain like quick if we trade the rooks it will be simply lost for black I mean it's too passive so I would say rookie one, but uh, it's quite possible this is uh, what they want us to. But I, I just don't really understand how is that helps us out after king f8. Yeah, I don't see it. So let's see what the solution here is. Rook f to e1 is correct. But uh, they saying black is better. No, I, I think it's a mistake. It, it cannot be better. Like how is it? Uh, response like this better. I mean, the position is drawn even if uh, we exchange this three for this two. So uh, I think it's just a mistake here. Okay. Yeah, here, of course, th that's why uh, the book is written. I'm sure there are plenty of comments in the, um, in the book, so it will be helpful to read it. I just don't want to open it up at, at the moment, just hoping. Okay. Yeah, so it was more important to exchange knights here than exchange the rook. It, uh, I think that was the question. Yeah, I, I know it's it's a complicated. It's a uh, like what I'm trying to say. It's a grandmaster level puzzles. It's the uh, with no clear solutions. It it's not like you know. It's not Dvoretsky. It's a uh, it's an end game book that uh, you can put a lot of your own insights. Like when you're working on it. Uh, I remember like I, I could not beat my students in a lot of those puzzles. It's just like they were saying, okay, this, and uh, I just really, there's nothing I could have done. So, all right, well, hopefully this will be better like uh, as we're going on. Uh, okay, oh no, check this out. Okay, rook f to d1, takes, takes. No, okay, well, Aha, so here we trade in it, not so this is like a and now we play knight d2, trade in this knight, and then there is no defense against rook d7. Okay, I got it, but uh, I think rook takes taking on d1, giving up d file, and then go rook takes c4 is just uh, irresponsible for black, and he should just wait. Oh, that's already the next one. Okay. 
Sorry about this, bishop d7 here, like we'll skip it. We'll go straight to the next one. All right, wait to move. Okay, a correct exchange right here. Mm. Okay, so Yeah, you know what? I, I just I cannot live it like this. Uh, let me just get back and see you after King F8. Are we missing something obvious? Rook F to D1 and King F8. No, it's equal, right? It's just uh, that's what I thought. We'll take, we'll go king f1, king e2. No, white will be pressing, but uh, not, not as much, yeah. Okay, so I'm not sure what this example was all about. So, turn. Okay, bishop d7, we saw it here. Here, okay, so white to move, and uh, we need to make a decision on whether or not to trade or whether we play or not we're playing rook takes e7 i don't think there's any tactics left or are we keeping two rooks on the board okay we're keeping two rooks on the board probably i wanted to say we should not allow rook e2 but I, now that i'm thinking about it it really doesn't matter uh rook no, it does. So if we go rook d5, rook e2. Oh, then we go rook d2, and the rook uh, definitely standing. That uh, That's much better version to, of exchanging uh, than right now, right? Uh, rook takes e7, king takes e7. And then what? King c2. And if we'll go rook d2 right now, just not allowing black, just not giving black any. Yeah, maybe, how about rook 7 to d2 and then slowly starting improving our position with king c2 and b3 and c4 and so on. Uh, our rooks are much more active than uh, our opponent's rooks, so uh, I believe we do not trade rooks here and rook d5 rook e2 i'm not sure how we're supposed to deal with it oh okay well, b2 is not hanging at the moment maybe this is the the answer but well well how we defend b2 yeah i'll play rook 3 to d2 here let's see that that's what they want us From here, oops, uh, home. Oh, wow, okay. However, they say taking and before is also good. So, yeah, you see, computer also in between, the same dilemma that we had, taking and before, and then just to bring king and improve it, or go rook seven, seven to d2. Objectively, it's the same. Wow. You see this? Someone analyzed it to a depth of 31. So this is a rook 7 to d2 stockfish. And looks a little different. From, okay. Uh, let's see what's the answer. Okay, but we know that this is not a final answer. So rook seven to d two exclaim. Okay, 
So I would imagine that he tries to explain in the book that uh, we don't trade an active rook. And then let's look at it slowly improving our position. Okay. Here we're trading, fixing pawn on the dark square. Wow. That's a lot of maneuvering. No, and finally white king here yeah, makes it through. Okay. Very good technique. What can I say? No, and all right, looks white to move. And since we're talking about trading it, uh, rook c5, right? Yes or no? So rook c5. Rook c5. <coughs> uh, idea of rook c5 might be rook 1 to b5. Rook 1 to b5 and attack the pawn. But I still don't understand how it works. If uh, so for example, black passes, right? And rook one to b5. Pawn is not hanging at the moment because, oh, it does. No, because I'll take on c5, right? So all I have to do right now, I, I need to move with my king away from the, from the check. So, where do I move? Oh, also threaten to take on c7 and then win the pawn. So maybe here, right? Is that correct? Tin, tin. Uh, takes, takes. Okay, so so it's a combination of things. So here we go, rook c5, king here. Let's say we're trying to make it here, we go h6. Where is the break? Hmm. Like rook b5, oops, rook b5 and king d8. Where is the break? Yeah, uh, trading for black is bad on c5 because mainly because white king gets to d4. Like, uh, yeah, the rest would be like acceptable, but. Uh, this makes d5 forever uh, forever weak and some kind of a break with uh, a6 rook b8 combined with c6 will win the game immediately for white so no black cannot afford to break but i don't understand like uh, where where's the where's the breaking through so rook b5 and king d8 so let's try it on mm. find a way to do it here so take takes uh-huh I think I got the idea okay how about you do you do you see the way for white to make a progress here
Sacrifice on the bishop, I don't think it will help that much because uh, I, I keep in the blockade, okay? So I see two ways to go for white. I mean, the one is like a straightforward sack. Just to uh, give it up. No one hopes that our uh, two connected pawns will make it, right? And actually, so takes, takes. No. Is that winning? If bishop goes away and then we go d5, I'll go rook c5 and I'm not. Oh, not sure. Okay, we can go h5, right? So, takes, takes. Oh, uh, h5, right? And this is, that doesn't look good. Yeah, then, then two pawns just win. So, either this one or another uh, version of it is just to go a4. Uh, black passes. No, I don't know, it doesn't matter which way. And now we're taking that way. Takes and this one. No, okay, I mean, I, I put my kink in a, in a bad position. So let's say just this. Oh, it doesn't work. Because, sorry, uh, I'll take on b5. Yeah, and then black is good. Okay, so king king is seven. No, it doesn't. Not, now I can take right. Bishop takes d five. So black's black's uh, setup is extremely difficult here. I mean, if I need to pass, but maybe I I simply don't have a move. It's no move for black. It took time. So let's say here this. Yeah, we have to do this. Rook takes d5, there's no other way. Um, and then hope that we'll win here. Okay, so no, obviously that's the only way for white to to play for a win in this position. Everything else is just well. That's what I said. Now that I've said it, now I see the a four or whatever a six. B6, A5 also makes a lot of sense. So maybe this one, huh? You saw an A6. Six. Yeah, I mean, it's just not a good position. All right, well, so it's between rook c5 and a4. No, well, if it's a4, I don't think uh, this position would uh, appear in this book. So it must be rook c5. Let's take a look at the answer. Rook c5, exclaim. Uh, Do they say anything about a4? a4, h6, a6. Okay, what's the computer thinks about it? All right, once I gave it to him, well, he started saying, yeah, maybe, but it did not look at it uh, on his own. And so rook c5 okay now let's see 
uh, what's the book line? King e7, rook b5, rook takes c5, uh -huh. rook takes c5 already forced, takes king d8, now a6. And here comes like a beautiful tactic, so b6. It's a very cute move. And bishop g8, yeah, this a wide breakthrough. And position becomes winning. Uh, no, that was not very complicated, but uh, okay, yeah, rook c5 uh, was the way to improve it and go through uh let let me close this one so we won't see a solution for next save now okay here we go so um <laughs> well, let's try to understand what they want from us here Correct exchange, and that means uh, we can take on. Okay, let's try to figure it out. So two bishops for for white. White has an advantage, but uh, the pawn on g4 is hanging. If we go g5, then knight g4 check. King of four and what? Take on G five, G five, G five, G five, G five. Mm. No, okay, the two. Uh -huh. Take the knight, and pawns might be long terms of the light square bishop. Okay, so alternate, uh, we chosen here between g5, which looks like, okay, a normal move with a, a bunch of different lines after that. And bishop takes e5. If we do this, we need to fix the h and g pawn on the, on the light squares and go g5 next move. And then after bishop e6, my understanding that uh, if we don't have bishop c4, then it's all like completely useless. So it's a forced line. Bishop takes g5, bishop e6, bishop c4. And we need to under understand that whether it's winning or not. Okay, let's continue the line. Bishop takes c4, takes. King goes to. Uh huh. Can we play d4 instead of bishop c4? Can we play c4? Right um, if, uh, we can play b4, right? But then I don't understand what what in the world did we achieve, like by by exchanging bishops. Um, my whole point was to fix dark square uh, pawns on h7 and g6. So the bishop can go to g8. If we don't have it, just like a... Okay, you, you're saying that we might fix the, the other pawns as well, right? Okay. So bishop e6, b4, um, king to d7, a5. And... king to c7. And how are we gonna break through? Black's next move is b5. So takes, takes, g5. Bishop e6. Bishop c4 takes, takes. King e7. See, I need to play c5. King d7, king d3, king c6, king c4. That looks like a draw to me. Yep. Uh, 
again yeah in the game definitely definitely g5 but uh, if g5 is the answer then i don't really understand why it's given to us as a problem so there might be some want uh, d5 exhausting yeah i know <laughs> Uh, it's exhausting and position is super simple right and it's exhausting even to think about like when the line started going like more than four moves you like oh, do I really need it you know it's a simple end game like do I really need to calculate all this and just like why not to play a simple g5 and uh, keep the pressure on and so what if you suck g points so the can uh uh, king com comes in f4. Uh, how do you sack the g pawn? King d4? King d4. Knight takes g4. Um, and then you go king c5. Knight goes to f2. That's a lot of counterplay, isn't it? King f2. A little worried that this might be a lot of a. Uh, on the other hand, so king d4, knight takes g4. Though opposite color bishops, we it's just a draw. So king c5, knight f2, king b6, knight takes e4, bishop b4, and then bishop c6 bishop takes a6 that's not bad i like it that's a winning chances so king d4 what if bishop takes g4 then if we take take king c5 king d7 and king protects the pawn so king d4 bishop takes g4 uh, don't, yeah, I think we're a little bit late here because king of one, king knight c six check and king d seven. Mm. What about king f four? Okay, what about it? Um, probably, n probably knight of seven, bishop c five. And g5 check, right? We're fixing pawns and then check, check, and I uh, know king h knight h6 try to win a pawn. So let me say it. So here we go, and turn. Uh, where would we go if we go to c7? check and king is seven so i want to stay here but then check uh, two, 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 two. this one here and if i go g3 this and the king And king comes in knight d6. No, that doesn't feel convincing. So this is better. So knight f7, bishop f4, king g7. Aha, uh -huh, maybe here we go. Oh, yeah. King d4 and then going for the knight. Uh, this definitely looks like a pressure. And if king d4. Yeah, but at the moment the pawn is hanging. So we can only do it right here. King d4 first. Mm -hmm. And then go. No, okay, here we go. Before uh, 
text text can this one hmm it's very close to a draw and then all right here King C6, check. Yeah, I'm afraid we're not, we're not gonna be able to win it. It's just like the knight is too mobile here. On the other hand, no. Okay. All right, so let's go back and let's see the solution here. All right, G5 is the correct one. Okay, I hope that this is the, or there is the next one as well. No, it's already a different one, okay. Well, previous, so G5. Correct. Knight f7, bishop f4 takes, and bishop takes. Okay, why this is important? Because if we take in with a pawn, mm, that looks like a pressure for white. Still, so bishop takes, bishop e6, uh, where's the win? Okay, that's the win. Okay. Slowly but surely, okay. All right, so So the key was here to take it with the bishop and not with the pawn. So this was a correct exchange here. Okay. You know, still I'm looking at it and I'm like probably as puzzled as you are. I'm like, <laughs> is that really, I mean, that deep? Okay. Because, uh, yeah, but, uh, you know, uh, like today, for some reason, it's different from what, like, uh, like I said, went through the whole book with, with my students around like 1900 to 2200. And uh, I remember it was difficult, but I just, I did not remember that it was that difficult. So I don't know, maybe it's just me, you know. I like really declined in three years and I just like don't see anything <laughs> and uh, that it's in fact not not difficult at all I mean just so um, anyway it's uh, what I want uh, it's the book that if you feel like a uh, end game uh, end game fans uh, very 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 interesting okay uh, a lot of uh, examples are um, discussable let's put it very mildly over there but uh, Rosenthalis uh, is Eduardus Rosenthalis who uh, a Lithuanian grandmaster who probably I, I'm not sure if he lives in Israel right now or he just spend a lot of time yet still represent Lithuania. Uh, always been playing this way. The, not even like, uh, you know, some people planned for minimal advantage. This guy was always planned for something next to nothing. Every like, and nevertheless, he made like unbelievable career, probably out of the end games like this, okay? And, uh, Probably he was trying to teach us like his way of playing chess, which is like, you know, everybody has his own way. That's what, what I can say to me. Uh, that's 
very tiring when you know squeezing the water out of the stone like in here but uh, a lot of people might find it like very very attractive way of playing it because basically you're not allowing your opponent any winning chances so a lot of people appreciate it so this is uh, this is a book if you're interested uh, again it's a GM level puzzle so uh, very very difficult ones and uh, I guess this is it for today yeah sorry about the little m mess in the, in the show because uh, sometimes the puzzles are too hard even for presenters so well that's what happened today <laughs> okay guys well thank you for being here tonight and uh, Alex Shabalov, that was a uh, um, Tuesday end game lecture at the St. Louis Chess Club, and I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye. <laughs>